Hey folks, Real Honesty with John Redlin. I'm John Redlin, and this is part 5 of my Top 40 Least Favorite Wrestlers series. And this is ongoing, I got 17 left to talk about. I'm kind of doing 5 a show, so we'll see, but if you watched the previous parts, you know what this is all about. They had to compete in the ring. No Russo, Josh Matthews, Mark Baden, Ed Ferrara, those are, those, they're all pieces of shit for one reason, or in the case of Russo or Mark Baden, plenty. And Josh Matthews is a piece of shit, his wardrobe notwithstanding, even though his wardrobe is moreover and more charismatic than he'll ever be, and his wardrobe's horrible. But anyway, number 17, David Flair. He's never going to live up to Ric Flair's name. He was never going to. It's like, And it was sad because if he had been brought along better and not been pushed like he was and expected to get in the ring so quickly and been brought along better, he might have been good. But he was in. He was out of the business within four years. I think by 2003, 2004, he was gone from the business. Um, if you've seen recent pictures of him, the guy has gained a ton of weight. I mean, I hope he's okay. I hope it's not like major health issues. I don't know. I don't keep up on the health issues of various people. And by the way, in case you in case you guys hear occasional booms, relax. You know, I've, you're not you're not going insane. Where I live, people tend to light off fireworks a month before June. You're a month before July, and then all the way sometimes into October. So it gets really loud. But anyway. So that's why, in case you hear an <clears throat> occasional boom, don't worry. It's not my TV or anything or nothing bad's happening. It's just fireworks. But yeah, David Flair, it's just, I mean, he he what, he couldn't really wrestle. He couldn't really execute that many moves. He, um, he played the psycho character fine, I guess. I mean, he would stalk some women or whatever. It just, it wasn't any good. And he had the, I think it was the pregnancy angle that he had with Stacy. Or, like, Stacy pretended to be pregnant but wasn't really pregnant. It was Stacy or Tori. I think it was Stacy, but just, ugh. Just David was involved in one angle, bad angle after another. And it's like they were actively trying to kill his passion or trying to pay back, you know, get back at Rick. Like, because of the heat that Rick had with WCW. Justifiable, you know, by Rick to want to sue WCW, or at least Bischoff specifically. And get control of the company because of how he was treated. And I'm not blaming him. That, that, that's a whole other story that got buried, you know, that's been squashed by Flair and Bishop anyway. Um, just David Flair, just you watch the guy. The guy just didn't have it. He just didn't have it. He was... He was a lot like Eric Watts. And I mentioned in the previous video, he just didn't have it. It just, it just wasn't there. Whether his passion was killed off by bad booking... And by constant pressure of being Ric Flair's son, whatever it was, David Flair was just garbage. He was absolute garbage in the ring. He was just, he was just terrible, terrible to watch. Is he a terrible human being? I don't know. I know he's gained a lot of weight. I hope he doesn't have severe health issues. I'm, I'm not wishing ill on the guy, but just David Flair was just garbage, just garbage in the ring. Number sixteen, Lacey Von Erich. I'm trying. I'm gonna try to be as nice as I can be here. Her dad died when she was very young his own life when he was 33, 34, her dad, Carrie Von Erich, the famous Von Erich family, shock of shocks, um, with that last name. So it couldn't have been easy <clears throat> for her to go on or for her to even want to get in the business that her dad was in. So I'm not picking on the person, Lacey Von Erich. That being, it, was, it couldn't be easy losing your dad at that age. That being said, in the ring, the person in the ring, she was fucking horrible. She couldn't do anything. I mean, it's like WWE didn't use her. I mean, I think she was in. I think she was in their developmental program for a little bit, and she got released because she couldn't do anything. She couldn't do a basic back elbow in the corner. She tried doing like a flip into the corner and couldn't do anything. I know she was part of Bound for Glory 2013, I believe. 2012, 2013. It was one of the two. I think it was 2013. But just any time, like I, I watched her. I mean, at the time, she looked good. I'll give her that much. But she couldn't do... She couldn't really talk. She damn sure couldn't wrestle. And, I mean, it was it was either that she never had the proper training, never wanted the proper training, or just never got it. Some people have it, some people don't. She did not have it. And she is one of the worst, you know, second, third generation talents that's ever been in the... I mean, actually, I think she would technically be third generation... Because her grandfather, Fritz, 
he was in the ring, and then Carrie, so second generation. So yeah, okay, she'd be third generation. I mean, I think she's, I think she's out of wrestling. I think she's been out of wrestling for a bit, and I think she's in. I want to say she's doing modeling or she's doing acting or something. I think she even has a kid. So I mean, I, I wish her the best on that. But it's just watching her in the ring. It was like literally watching an amateur not know what they're doing. And it's like they put somebody that was about two years away from being main, you know, TV pay-per-view ready and putting her on TV. It was actually worse than Eva Marie because Lacey had the bloodlines with her and it just never worked. It never clicked. Nothing. Again, not picking on the woman herself. Can't be easy losing your dad. It's got to be tough. But just Lacey Von Erich in the ring. Terrible. It's terrible. Couldn't do anything at all. Number 15, Bruce Beefcake. I mean, Bruce Beefcake is one of the biggest embarrassments in wrestling. I mean, and I know he was popular. And he had, he was a pretty good heel. Him and Greg Valentine were a pretty good heel, heel team as a dream team. And then he became Brutus the Barber Beefcake at WrestleMania 3. <clears throat> cutting Adrian Adonis' hair. And that gimmick got him over. And... He wasn't great in the ring. I mean, he really wasn't. I mean, if it if it would night if it would late eighties, early nineties cartoonish wrestling, him putting people to sleep, wearing the colorful tights with the stuff cut out, and you know, having the big scissors and you know, doing that kind of stuff, and having the barber shop uh, show. He did have a parasailing accident and had to have a bunch of metal plates put in his face, and he had a long road to recovery. And I'm glad he's recovered. Um, that that's something that would normally kill about somebody, or kill somebody. And it couldn't have been easy to come back, and he did come back. So I, I give him credit for that, and I give Vince credit for sticking by him. And he was also Hogan's best That's the thing, he was Hogan's best friend, or at least one of Hogan's best friends. So that's why he got so many opportunities. Teamed up with Hogan, Mania 9. Um, his time, he was... He, he had about 18,000 gimmicks in WCW. The Disciple was the only one where you look at him and it's like, okay, he looks different. Um, but yeah, he was he was that. He was the booty man. He was a Zodiac, the man with no name. He was... Why the hell am I forgetting one? Brother Brudai. Um, I mean, that was when he first came to WCW, but he just... Uh, he was... <laughs> he was just so embarrassing. It's just so embarrassing watching the guy, and it's like, it, he even is like, I mean, I don't think he really wrestled much after 2000, 2001. Um, I'm not too sure about that. I never really kept up on the guy's career because I wasn't a fan of his. I didn't think he was a very good worker. Um, but WWE did do, they, they put some, I don't remember, I think it's on their YouTube channel, you have to look back on it, but it was like, you know, where are they now, and it was caught up with Brutus Beefcake, and he seems like he's doing good. He seems like he's healthy. Fans still recognize him. Good. I mean, just if, if he's back in the company's good graces and that kind of stuff, I'm not saying it should lead to a Hall of Fame induction, but I wouldn't be surprised if they put him in the Hall of Fame. And this is not a career retrospective on Bruce Beefcake. I mean, I'm sorry I'm going a little long, but I never cared for the guy. I found none of his gimmicks interesting. I, found, I never found him interesting. I never found him to be a great worker. I just, he... He just, he did the same basic moves and now with much variation and had the goofy facial expressions. I mean, the Zodiac in particular was ridiculous. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the man with no name. Oh, he's the Butcher. So the Butcher, Starcade 94, um, him versus Hogan, probably the worst Starcade main event. In fact, actually, yes. It was worse than Goldberg versus Brett when Goldberg injured Brett and took him out. Um, it was inadvertent. I mean, I blamed Goldberg before and I shouldn't. Because if Brett doesn't blame Goldberg, then why should I? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the other thing, unless, unless a wrestler specifically blames somebody for their injury, then some fans are just, are, are just piling on when they shouldn't be. <clears throat> but Bruce Beefcake just... Couldn't work, couldn't really wrestle. I mean, and maybe part of that could be because of his accident, his parasailing accident. He was limited in what he could do. <clears throat> but then why continue to wrestle? Maybe be a cheerleader on the outside, be a guy, a hype guy for Hogan. I, I don't know. 
He was just never a very good worker, and I never cared for him. <clears throat> Though I'm glad he's okay. I, I He's never, to my knowledge, he's never done anything horrible <clears throat> to somebody. Like some others on this list that I will get to, especially in the top couple. But, yeah, Brutus Beefcake, I just, I just never cared for him. Number 14, Santino Morella. Look, the man himself I have no issue with. The man himself seems very down to earth. I hate the Santino face character. As a heel, he was fine. He would have been better as a heel. Um, the face thing with the Cobra, it just it got so ridiculous. The fact that the Cobra was such a protective move. <clears throat> it was embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. And it was embarrassing that he, as a face, got some title runs. Now look, let, let me just say this. Let me say this. Santino, the man, no issue. Pretty damn good wrestler when they allowed him to be. But I hated the character. And I hate I hated the character, I hated the gimmick. I just I hate it. <clears throat> it was like anytime that music hit, I was just like, okay, this, this is gonna be comedy bullshit. The one time I laughed at anything, one of the last times I laughed at anything he did. The tea time that he that him and Kozlov had with um Seamus. It was two thousand ten, November two thousand ten. And talking about we have ginger tea or whatever, and he was like trying to act shocked and Seamus is trying to be a heel, he's just He's trying not to laugh. He's trying not to laugh at all, but... <clears throat> um, yeah, it's just... Santino was not entertaining to me. He wasn't. He entertained a lot of people. That's cool. I just never personally found him entertained. Number... Number 13 and... Oh, boy. Yeah, here we go. This this this, this one's going to get me some hate. Sabu. Now, look. Let me, let me just say this much. He's put his body through a lot to entertain people. He has. He also was a shit worker. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. He was. It just, it, he could do some incredible hardcore shit and that kind of stuff, but that to, to me, that doesn't take talent. It doesn't. Doing a lot of that hardcore stuff or whatever, doing a lot of the, you know, the weapon shots, using barbed wire, um, <clears throat> you know, moonsaulting a table, that doesn't take talent. That takes a willingness to just not care about your body. <clears throat> and I can't worry. It's like, I'm sorry, part of it is because he was in ECW. He was doing it in, you know, Japan, FMW, I believe. was the name of the company. <clears throat> he was doing that for years before he got to ECW. But it's just, him and RVD had a good feud. I mean, him and Taz had a decent feud. I still say they're barely legal. 97 matches overhyped. It was good. Don't get me wrong, but it was overhyped. Sabu didn't talk for the longest time, then had to because of mounting medical bills. And I mean, look, it, it, it's terrible that a guy ended up having some medical <clears throat> issues, but what do you expect when you keep continue to moonsault tables, use chairs, use barbed wire covered chairs, get yourself cut up in barbed wire, wrap barbed wire around your body, jump on Terry Funk, get tangled in a barbed wire mess, slice open your own arm, um, <clears throat> well, you know, on the barbed wire, and do a bunch of ungodly stuff to yourself when you didn't have to. Because he actually... He, he was agile and could hit some good leg drops and stuff like that, but if you take the weapons away from Sabu, he had nothing. He had nothing. I mean, especially for about 97 on. But, I mean, it's just, the, the guy was a great character in ECW, you know, the little, you know, <clears throat> basement-dwelling promotion that it was. And, yeah, I know that it grew and grew, and there were people that were successful out of it, but sorry but for every... And, Co and I'm going to say it again, Cody Rhodes said it best on one of the Monday Night War episodes. ECW has some really good ideas, but for every one of those, there were like eight, you know, seven or eight, like, my God, this is horrible. And he's right. And Sabu, sorry, Sabu was never somebody I particularly found entertaining. I mean, if you found him entertaining, great. I mean, that's that's, that's awesome. Do, do I wish that the guy had had health issues? No, but he kind of brought him on himself by doing all that stuff to his body. I mean, and even the time where he could have made more money, like man, if when he was in Impact Wrestling for a bit, when he made some spot appearances for WWE, like when he appeared um, and had a match against Rhino at One Night Stand 06 and then signed with WWE for like a year <clears throat> in 06. Well, I think it was 05 that he faced Rhino. In 06, he faced Ray, and he was signed to a contract. But just, I mean, Sabu, 
sorry, just I never, I never got the appeal of Sabu. I, if people like him, great. I just never did. Sorry, just I just never understood why people like Sabu. I heard interviews with him on uh, what was it? One it was um, Forever Hardcore. It was Jeremy Borash directed like EC Fall Rise and Fall of ECW like documentary. Sabu doesn't seem like a mean guy. Though I've heard he's trashed some hotel rooms and done some stuff, and if that's true, if, then that's a pretty shitty thing to do. If that's true. <clears throat> but also, I mean, he never struck me as, like, necessarily a bad guy in the interviews. But I don't know. I just never cared for his character. Now we're going to finish off with Ernest the Cat Miller. Couldn't fucking dance. He couldn't fucking talk. He couldn't fucking wrestle. Oh, he's a three-time world karate champion or whatever. With his coordination skills, I'm amazed he didn't kick himself in the back of his head. I mean, if he was that, if he was that good, I mean, he should have been, he should have been able to be a five, you know, a five-time WCW champion um, <clears throat> in one year. I mean, seriously, if he was as good as he thought he was, and I guess the only reason he was there, I think he was friends with Bischoff. I mean, it depends on depends on what you read and what you believe. I don't know. I like Eric Bischoff, so I don't want to I don't want to make it seem like I'm saying anything bad about him because I'm not. But Ernest Miller was shit. He was sh he was shit whether he was a face. He was shit whether he was a heel. He was the commissioner at a few points in WCW, and he wasn't entertaining. I mean, Ernest Miller was not entertaining. He had a pretty good acting turn in The Wrestler. I mean, I'll give him that much credit. Um, even though, from what they did in The Wrestler, it was mostly... Um, Stuff that they did with Combat Zone Wrestling, which, by the way, Combat Zone Wrestling is garbage. Sorry, there's something wrong with you, severely wrong with you, if you think our Combat Zone, you know, CZW is actually wrestling. Um, and yes, I know some wrestlers have been in there that are currently in WWE, Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and that kind of stuff, but I just never got the appeal to promotion. Ernest Miller was garbage, plain and simple, <clears throat> not entertaining to watch. And I just never generally, I just never generally cared for him. I just, I just never did. I never found him entertaining. He wasn't great in his WWE run. Ernest Miller was just crap. He just was. Is he a crap human being? I don't know. I'm talking about his ring character. He was a crap ring character. Crap ring character, crap wrestler. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave that off. <clears throat> so I got a little bit more to cover. So it's probably going to be about three more shows. Anyway, do you agree? Do you disagree with what I've said? Like, share, comment, subscribe. My Twitter link is in the description. It's been Real Honesty with Jarmuthlin. I'm Jarmuthlin. I will see you soon.